Okay guys, so I think that I'm going to vlog my weekend because me and my girl Lara are going down to Cedar City for the Shakespeare Festival. So we're gonna make a cute video together, I've just decided. We're gonna vlog our weekend and we're going to be hilarious and adorable just like you all expect us to be. driving for like four hours now <laughs> and uh, she's getting weird we've made it through like three we're three or so close. three or four musicals we're so close and we're we need so to get out of this car we're like 30 minutes away what was that town that had the petting zoo Scipio Scipio yeah it was the halfway point and there's nothing there except for like three gas stations and the petting zoo. And the petting zoo is like part of the gas station. Yeah, it's awesome. We love it. Yep. <laughs> oh, we're recording. Oh. Oh, oh. Oops. Oh, I can cut that. No, you don't. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that didn't make any sense what I just said. Okay. It's been a long day. We're here. It's been a long day. We're yelling. It's been neighbors. the longest day. I think the only neighbors we have in this motel are ghosts. So and the guy that was literally sleeping behind the counter, I bet. <laughs> just, so we got here and it was like 6.30. Yeah, something like that. And we walk into the office and there's nobody at the front desk and we're like, like it's dead quiet except for the TV. And so we walk up and we stand at the counter and no one's coming and there's we're no like, bell. We're like yelling, we're like, hello. Yeah, so we finally hello. go, hello. And after like 20 seconds, someone says, coming like from the back and I was like someone was just drugged or like mm -hmm. was sleeping back there or was like covering up a murder I don't yeah know. and then this this Indian guy came out and like checked us in and like really broken English and he I couldn't understand scared him. me just a little bit and now <coughs> we're in a room three doors down from the office bless you oh my gosh um, our room could be worse we it have really all, could we have our basic necessities so we're happy I've slept in worse and this is clean at least. Any yeah. room that I sleep in that has like exposed cinder blocks like or hair in the drain or like mm -hmm. weird smells. Yeah. But like we don't have it. We so. only have two out of those three. Yeah. <laughs> We're fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's literally fine. So today we drove all the way down here to Cedar City and we got checked in and she kept yelling at me because i would say oh we're so close and she finally goes girl you need to stop saying that because it's just stretches of land we for... were never anywhere near close when she said that it was just more like <laughs> desert for miles uh, and she's like we're so close but like yeah and so we finally got here got scared by i'm i don't even know if the guy who checked us in was alive if we're being real <laughs> He's like, like walking dead up in here is where we're staying. Are we in like the Hotel California, like the Eagles? Oh, song? definitely. Yeah. So yeah. we're never going to actually leave. We're just going to keep posting these videos until we die. <laughs> we're going mukbang. Is that how you say that? That's how I say it. I've heard like 10 different people say it 10 different ways. Yeah. I think um, it's very whatever. positive. Whatever that thing is that Trisha Paytas says. Yeah. She says mukbang or something. Which that sounds wrong. I don't know. I can't say But she invented it, right? so. That's true. But, so, um, we came to this hotel because it said that it had free breakfast, and we're like, oh, we're gonna save money because we're gonna have their breakfast. Well, we walked in, and their free breakfast was like this shady little, like, counter. Like, off one the counter? We were like. And, like, it, it looked like it had exactly one variety of cereal. Mm hmm. And so, we went to the grocery store. Yes, because also, like, even if they do have breakfast, mm -hmm. like we're not sure if we trust it. So mm -hmm. we're gonna spend the ten dollars on breakfast food and yes, be safe. So but we also got snacks for tonight because it's sleepover. Of course. So um, I I went with the classic cosmic brownies because I had to. And I got my green pea snack crisps that I snack on constantly and love. And this this is a story. This okay? Can you see it? It's a sixteen pack. I thought it was going upside down. 16 pack of fruit gushers, fruit by the foot, and fruit roll ups. But, girl, here's the tea. This was like $4. But they were having a sale on the fruit gusher boxes. Stop laughing. She's been upset I'm about this all night. I'm torn up about this, like in my soul. 
I am torn up about it. Because fruit gushers are my favorite and I would splurge on them this past year in college because they're expensive. Like you buy one box of just fruit gushers, like six mm -hmm. of them, and it's like four dollars. Like they're not cheap. No. So tonight we go to the store and they're having a sale on the fruit gusher six pack boxes. Four boxes for five dollars. And I did the math because nor the normal price is two fifty nine. So you could buy mm -hmm. two for ten dollars. You could buy four for five dollars. And we sat there in agony. But I could hear my mom's voice like in the back of my head, like that's not a healthy choice. You don't need that many fruit gushers. And here's the thing, like neither of us have any self-restraint when it comes to fruit gushers. No. So we could have made the excuse, okay, we'll get four boxes that'll last us the whole weekend plus some. Girl. It would have lasted us one night. No, we both would have sat here and eaten all four of those boxes. Mm -hmm. So we tried to make, We'll still eat all 16 of these, I'm pretty sure, by the end of the Probably. night. Probably. She's going to go into diabetic shock, and that's just going to be how our weekend it's finishes. Just, yeah, it's going to be rad. But anyway, I'm torn up about the fruit gushers because, like, how do you, how do you, how do you justify not doing that bargain, getting that sale? I can't talk. I, I really, like, I was right there with you. I was right but there with we you. still have fruit gushers in here. And it just won't be as many, but like, like, don't get us wrong. There's still like a lot of sugar that's going to be consumed. Right. We just don't it's have just, four boxes of gushers. Right. So like, technically we made the healthy decision. <laughs> We're going to justify it and say we made the healthy decision. And then, you know, we've got our breakfast essentials. We've got bananas and yogurt and all that good um, stuff. Orange juice is holding up our camera currently. Yes. So we do have orange juice. You just can't see it because it's behind you. Yes. Um, we got our energy. Yes. Well, technically, mine's just flavor. Mine's a uh, almond almond milk because mm -hmm. health, <laughs> and it's a mocha coffee drink, chilled coffee drink with mocha and almond milk. And I've actually been wanting to try it with almond milk since I saw it at Smith's the other day. So mine's just a lime ricky and a very tall can, which is okay. I love lime ricky. I do too. Like, it's a good also, choice. this brand is just. Like, this was the only brand I lived on in high school, like, the, the Mucho Mangoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could drink, yep. like, ten of these. Yep. Those uh, and, mm -hmm. like, the ice waters. Yeah. They're called ice, like, the sparkling water yeah, yeah, yeah. with the flavors that are, mm -hmm. like, a dollar. Yeah. And they're, like, in the tall skinny. Yeah. yeah. We just got, like, little yogurts. And speaking of bargains, this was five dollars, guys. Like, that's gonna last us. Twenty-four, count. Twenty-four muffins. And they're the mini ones. And they're the mini so we're going to stack on them all weekend. And it was only $5, so like, we're thriving. Th this is like our, our meals for the next two days. Yeah, we're getting pizza tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But, like, we're basically going to be living off of, like, yogurt and bananas and some blueberry muffins. And some Mexican food. We still have some leftovers. We do have some leftover Mexican food. And a food. microwave. Mm -hmm. so. so things could be a lot worse. <laughs> We're counting our blessings. Yes. All right, so what did we do tonight? We went to see Macbeth at the Ingolstadt Theater mm -hmm. at the Utah Shakespeare Festival, which is the brand new, I guess not brand new, it's like a couple years old now, mm -hmm. but the newest theater um, addition to the Shakespeare Festival. Oh yeah, and we saw Macbeth. Uh, <laughs> yes. I was just geeking out the whole time because like, as, as it was turning to dusk, like the show was getting darker and darker, and like mm -hmm. everybody's dying. And because it's an outdoor theater, mm -hmm. it's a replica of the Globe Theater, Shakespeare's Globe, mm -hmm. and so it's a big outdoor theater, and it's beautiful and it's huge, it's so lovely. And the, the sets that they built for that theater are so pretty. Oh yeah, like, the set stunning. tonight was gorgeous. It was really cool. They had like. Just, it was creepy. The whole show mm -hmm. was creepy in like the most perfect way. And they had these like just ghost white tapestries just hanging and they were all torn up and they were blowing mm -hmm. in the breeze. The the fake trees that they had like around the stage, every time the wind would blow, like the little red leaves would like blow mm -hmm. across the stage. It was magical. It was really, mm -hmm. really magical. Really, really cool. Um, Let's talk actor... about Wayne something. What's his name? Is that the actor that played Macbeth? Mm -hmm. Wait, I've done this program. Wayne B. His name's, last name starts with a B. 
But anyway, he's been at the festival for several years now, and I've seen him in lots of different roles, and he's amazing. He has this like stage presence that's incredible. His voice is always like so amazing. You can hear every single thing he's saying, and his acting is like oh, it was so compare. good. So he played Macbeth, and and Lady Macbeth too. She mm -hmm. was just beyond phenomenal. We were talking about in the car on the way back. Um, first mm. of all, how amazing people are that can memorize and perform Shakespeare because mm -hmm. I love Shakespeare as much as I love it and I'm such a nerd about it. I don't know if I could ever outdo oh. that. Macbeth, Wayne T. Carr. Wayne Carr, that's right. Yeah. Um, but just like, but then there's those actors that not only know it and can perform it, mm. but they do it in such a way that your brain doesn't even have to translate right. from Shakespeare to normal English because like if an actor hasn't studied Shakespeare and doesn't know what they're talking about, like you as the audience member have to do all the work to get the story out of their lines. Because you're literally, we were talking about this, mm. you literally are translating. It's Shakespeare Shakespeare's, is, it's a different language. Yeah. And I mean, that's something that I've had to study about, you know, it really, that's not how people talked ever. Mm -mm. He literally just created that style of language and we just kind of went with it. Right. Um, and so you literally have to translate all of that poetry and the point with Shakespeare has never been to like just get to the point it's to right. make the point as artistically as possible you know and the stories themselves are pretty straightforward mm -hmm. it's just a matter of understanding the dialogue and the speech as you go so right. Lady Macbeth and Macbeth were two actors that we that we saw tonight that we both felt like made it easy mm. to translate because they knew it so well and they were saying things in such a way that it was just automatically translating and mm. making sense in our minds. Some of the other like soldiers and noblemen, you, you kind of had to work for it because you could tell they weren't quite as experienced and some of the lines kind of got lost in the mix just because it's hard. It's hard. It's and so it hard. And it drag because mm -hmm. the scenes go on Yeah, forever. oh, for sure. I was talking about Oedipus before the show and like I can't count with Oedipus but supposedly like the version that I had to watch on YouTube for a class for a theater analysis class it was only like an hour and a half long I thought I'd been sitting there watching it for four hours because the actors just drug it out like it, it stopped also making sense from the 50s though so like true so it was bad and from that perspective and then the actors just didn't do anything with it it was terrifying was what it was it was actual nightmare fuel she's dying um i'm straight <laughs> choking on gusher juice right now <laughs> oh my god <coughs> but yeah mm -hmm. um but oh, talk about witches oh the witches yeah so um Maybe we should explain the plot of Macbeth for the people who don't like know it. Yeah. Do it. Oh, I'm I'm just out guys. here on my own. <laughs> um, okay, so Macbeth is basically the story of, you know, Macbeth. And he receives this like prophecy from the weird sisters who are the witches. And they basically tell him, You're gonna become the king. And so he and Lady Macbeth kind of take that and run with it. Like, they're the ones who kind of are like, oh, well, he's gonna be king, so now we have to make it happen. So it goes through this whole murder plot of killing the current king and him taking over, and then the traitor Macduff is, you know, rising out of rebellion to come and set the usurper straight. And it's really not a complicated story. It really isn't. No. It's just this guy killed this king, and then this guy comes in and kills that king. Yeah. And there are witches. And then there are witches. And then there are and witches. And the crazy queen. Uh, and Lady Macbeth is like <laughs> the bomb. Just everything about her is yeah. everything. Yeah. Just the way that she's just, she has it together until the very end. Like she has a plan, she knows what she's doing, and then at the very end she just kind of loses it. Um, but so the weird sisters, they're the best part I think. Mm -hmm. I love the weird sisters. They're these like. Which these are the iconic double double toil and trouble yeah. fire like that's from Macbeth yeah like they're iconic and they're basically these forest witches who are out here just 
causing mayhem doing for the sake thing. of doing witchy causing stuff. mayhem. As one does. Like they just sort of float in at their leisure and tell somebody some life changing thing and then just float out. And they're like, okay, bye. Me. Same. Really Same though. Is it? Yeah, I've done. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she's gonna do a makeup tutorial mm -hmm. of the oh of the witches. Mm-hmm. Inspired by the witches because they were really, really freaking cool. They were so cool. I want to do like the white out contacts. Yeah. Or, mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. It's going to be great. Um, Stay tuned. We're going to sit here and eat some junk food. And uh, what are we doing tomorrow? Mm. Tomorrow we're going to sleep in. Yeah. And then we're going to get some pizza. And then we're going to go see Best Hamlet. Best pizza in the world. Apparently, I. We're gonna see Joseph first. Oh, I thought I thought Hamlet was first. So we're gonna go see Joseph, Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat, and then tomorrow night we're gonna see Hamlet because why would? We and not? I'm so excited, and Quinn Matfield is Hamlet, and he's everything in this world. I am just so excited. I love doing stuff like this, like the culture and like the arts, and just it's so great. Mm -hmm. And yeah, my mom was telling we were talking about. Um, we were talking about Hamlet, and she's like, yeah, it's drama and murder plot, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, it's dramatic Lion King. Uh -huh. so that's, that's all it is. Yeah. Lion King is just Hamlet, but for kids. Yeah, exactly. So we're really stoked to see that, and mm -hmm. stoked to see Quinn Matfield. Yes. He's a god. Mm -hmm. Really excited. Yes. So, yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Last night, going into our last show, we saw Joseph this morning, mm -hmm. and it was wonderful. Okay, let's go over here. And tonight we're gonna see Hamlet, Hamlet, and supposedly it's like life changing, from what we've heard. Yeah. So last time I saw it here was in 2012, and it was life changing. And so. now Quinn Matfield is playing Hamlet, so it's definitely gonna be groundbreaking. I have very <laughs> high expectations for this show, so we're so excited. I'm so excited! Okay, hi. We're not okay. We're just gonna start off by saying that. Um, so today we saw Joseph, an amazing Technicolor dream coat. Mm -hmm. it was and so uh, fun. It was so fun. Like, the cast was so talented, and like, the brothers were so much fun. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just... I just sat there dancing all the time. It was it was so I good. love that show. It really is a great show, especially when it's done well, like with people who can actually dance. That's the thing. Like, it's hard to sit through mm -hmm. otherwise. But this one was really fun. And my little Joseph loving heart was so happy. They were so talented. And I can't I can't sit through a show when they've watered down the choreography. Mm -hmm. You know? Like if you don't have the actors to do the thing and don't do the thing. But this was fun because I felt like so much of it was so, like there were so many times where they were all just doing their own thing, but it was yeah. still choreographed and it wasn't, it was organized chaos and they were doing like, but like it was like modern day stuff. It was so done funny. correctly. Yeah. It was so yeah. fun. And the shout out to Russ, my acting professor who played Pharaoh. He was, he was phenomenal. He was iconic. He was phenomenal. He is iconic as it is, but. We were saying while we were leaving that show, Andrew Lloyd Webber went so hard. But then again, like, what show hasn't he gone hard for? Yeah. He just kind of... He just does the thing he and just everyone's does like, the thing. okay, yeah. He could literally do anything he wanted and we would all still pay, like, We'd 50 still plus stand. bucks for yeah. a ticket yeah. in the nosebleeds. I just love, I'm sitting there watching Joseph, and there's Calypso, and there's Western, mm -hmm. and there's just, like, random Elvis, whatever, and I'm sitting here going, this man also wrote Phantom of the Opera, and Cats, and, like, 
That's so he, funny to me. And like Evita and yeah, like, like he the, doesn't have one set style. Right, like the amount all. of of diversity is it's amazing. I just, I, oh, I love the guy. You gotta love him. I don't I don't understand. Anyways, so it was wonderful. The production quality was fantastic. Really I'm just mildly in love with the guy who played Joseph. It's fine. And I'm in love with all the brothers. Cool. So. Yeah, all of them. Brothers, so. I would die for them. I'm going to marry Joseph, and she's going to have, like, the other 11. Yeah. Maybe. And Ken. He's the biggest. <laughs> <laughs> Tea. 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 And our new mugs. Shakes our new Shakespeare mugs. So hers is the uh, Shakespearean insults. And mine is like the Shakespeare love quotes. Mm -hmm. They were like them. fourteen dollars, like super nice quality Something mugs. Like that, yeah. But yeah, super cute. We needed them. But so then tonight. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So we're here cracking ourselves. Okay, up. tonight. Tonight. <laughs> this man right here. Like, this is the playbill for like the entire festival. Can and you edit like the Hallelujah chorus? Yes. I'm gonna find a way to. <laughs> this man, he got the front page cover for the playbill for the entire festival for a reason. Yeah. I. Quinn Matfield is out of this world, inhuman. Like, I I can't even comprehend it. I really can't. He's up there with Brian Vaughn. He's up there. Well, I call Brian Vaughn the Lin Manuel of Utah. I'll take it. Cause like it's that. It. Because Brian Vaughn is this this quality person, human, and like he's right up there. Quinn mm -hmm. Matfield, like amazing, amazing. Like I can't, I I can't. Like I I I went in and I knew that it was gonna be good. I expected it to be good. And then, like, I was even still just, like, absolutely blown away by this guy. Mm -hmm. He humanized Hamlet to this, like, unworldly level. But like, still worldly, because it was... I don't know. I don't know how to explain I, it. I have no idea. Like, I could relate to Hamlet. Mm -hmm. Like, he made sense to me. The Before I... When I've seen this show, Hamlet's character didn't really like click with me yeah you know he was really hard to like connect with and understand but this man i was right there with hamlet the whole time I yeah like, oh yeah this makes it's sense a, it's such a complex character and it's so easy to portray it in a way that's not cheesy is not the right word but yeah. that that um it just is hard that okay it complex character it's very easy to portray it as a complex character mm -hmm. To the point where it's corny and doesn't really make sense. But Quinn, like she said, humanized him to this point of like, oh, I understand completely mm -hmm. why he is the way he is, what he's doing, and falling right there. And Quinn's one of those Shakespeare actors that he talks, and you don't even have to translate. Right. Like, it, it just <laughs> it was so easy to follow him. Yeah. Well, and like you were saying, it's... It's easy to make Hamlet a cheesy character mm -hmm. if you don't know what you're doing. And but somehow he found a way to make him both a hilarious character mm -hmm. and yet so deep and like so passionate and so yeah. complicated. Yeah. I've had a couple of friends now tell me like, you know, oh he's so funny. Which I, I've seen I've seen Quinn in I saw him as Black Stash and Peter and the Starcatcher. Hilarious. Still one of the funniest performances mm -hmm. I've ever seen in my life. So he is a comedic actor, but I've never seen him in a Shakespeare piece. And so when people were saying, "Oh yeah, he brings this comedy to Hamlet," I was like, "How do you?" Make I don't know how Hamlet to think comical. of that because that that now it's gonna now I feel like it's gonna be cheesy, but it wasn't. Like he was no. this normal human dude dealing with some stuff and trying to figure out how to take care of it. And I mean, the Shakespeare actors have a tendency to play them so stiffly. Mm -hmm. And like by the rule book. Yeah. He was such a flexible performer, you know? Yeah. Like he just he moved and he adapted. Was so natural so well. and like the script didn't feel rehearsed for him. Uh uh. It didn't feel like he was 
reading a Shakespeare script. It felt like he was in and, a very natural setting. Yeah, it felt like we were, they had just cut away half of the house and put us inside the house, mm -hmm. 3D, and we were just watching his life. And there were a few of the actors that I didn't feel like had that quality, and it was such a strong contrast mm -hmm. to him. Yeah. Like, um, Rosencrantz and uh -huh. what's his face? They felt a little stiff to me. Yeah, they did. And so it was just a really weird contrast to have him playing it so naturally and doing so much with his character while they were just kind of like there. Yeah. In the same space. Yeah. I think the women in this show are fascinating mm -hmm. to me, and tonight especially even more, Ophelia and Gertrude, who's the mom, both of them, I'm like, I would love, love to play one of those roles someday, just oh, to yeah. delve into those minds, because those two women are fascinating. Because, again, with Ophelia, you have to be able to absolutely fall apart without making it cheesy. Mm -hmm. She has to absolutely lose her mind but not come off as slapstick. Right. Or even Gertrude, like, because tonight I was just sitting there going, what in the heck is this woman's deal? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> what is she doing? Why is she like this? And that's a, that's a, oh my gosh, what am I trying to say? That's how a lot of people think of Hamlet too. Mm -hmm. And so I would love for one day, the actress tonight was phenomenal, but I would she love was. to be able to, to understand her one day too. Now, the way that I understand Hamlet, because Gertrude mm -hmm. is so fascinating to me. I really, I just wanted to get into more of Gertrude and the uncle's relationship. Uh-huh. Because I feel like, I mean... There's a story there. There is. For sure. And it kind of just gets glossed over because we're seeing so much of it just from Hamlet's perspective. Right. I want to see that side of that story. Yeah, I want to know bit how more. that happened. Because, I mean, yeah, it was, it was fast. They never really said... Well, Gertrude fell in love with the uncle, and then this happened, and then this happened. But, yeah, it was just, it, their relationship was so fast. Like, nobody questioned the fact that Hamlet's dad was being buried, and then they immediately went into the wedding. This wedding, yeah. Like, I feel like they just kind of glossed over that. Yes. Yeah. There's a story. That's on the bard's end of things. Yeah. Even Ophelia and Hamlet. Because yeah. you know that they're in love at some point, and then he pushes her away in his attempt to while protect her. <laughs> and while he's trying to convince everybody else that he's going that he's insane. Crazy. And, and he, yeah, so then, and then she, spoiler, then she dies. And then all of a sudden he comes back, and he's like, but I loved her. And, and it's, it, I don't know, maybe it was just me, but tonight it, I was, I was struggling to feel their chemistry and their Yeah, relationship. like... When they were fighting and then he kissed her, I was like, okay, that just feels a little bit off. Mm -hmm. It wasn't necessarily the actor's fault. It just, no. I don't know. The it was just the played. lack of their story being told because it is Hamlet's story. Mm -hmm. But Ophelia really is such a great character. And I mean, I was sitting there thinking about it. She thinks that it's her fault that Hamlet goes insane. Mm -hmm. She thinks that it's her fault that Placio dies because Hamlet went insane. Mm -hmm. Like, she's carrying all this weight, and on top of that, she's like, oh, and he doesn't love me anymore. Yeah. So, and, okay, there was an audience member. She was sitting right next to us, and during intermission, she said, I just don't get why Ophelia just loses her mind and kills herself because Hamlet says that she he's goes, not in love like, with her. She goes, like, get a hold of yourself, or something like that, and we were both like... D you don't understand what? what's happening here at all. Are you? Yeah. Mm -mm. That was funny. But. Oh, and then the other thing was how they handled Ophelia's death. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, everybody's just kind of universally known that Ophelia, like, basically threw herself into the river. Mm -hmm. Like, she drowned. She drowns herself. She, but, so they tell that story. But then tonight... After the queen tells this story, they show sort of like a flashback, and it's Ophelia sitting by the edge of the water, and the guards come and drowned her, which kind of didn't make sense to me. I didn't feel like the guards had a reason to kill her. You know, I don't yeah. feel like Gertrude had a reason to have her killed. Yeah. So, 
I'm, I question that directing choice. Yeah, more it than was anything. definitely interesting though. Oh yeah, very interesting. I'm, I'm not ready to leave this festival. I never am. I never am. Like, we have to go back and I be... I love it so much. I've come every summer since I was 13, and... We have to go and be surrounded by mediocre people now. I know! <laughs> and... And see mediocre theater. <laughs> not to shade any of our local theater no, friends. No, but it's just, But like, y'all ain't him. I know, and I just sit here going, like, how... I can't even imagine what it would be like to be able to work alongside minds like this, like Quinn and like Brian and um, Michael, like all these amazing mm -hmm. people that I literally just go nuts over when I get down here and I'm a total fangirl. It's like I'm at a One Direction concert, honestly. Like, it's like that, but for these actors. They're just so insanely talented and it bugs me to death that more people aren't just as in love with this style of theater as we are. Yeah. I mean, it's so It's such beautiful. a shame. It's so beautiful. It's, oh my gosh. And it just boggles my mind. Like, it's so easy to put people up on pedestals mm -hmm. like celebrities and things and, you know, they're on a whole other level. But then you come here and every... I mean, we got here yesterday and I saw Michael Doherty just, like, hanging out at the Green Show and I was like... He's just right there. He's a nor he's in normal like, people clothes. He's just chilling. They're just normal people, they're normal. and yet somehow, like, they're this. Yeah, you know, and it's insane. I don't know. The fact that there are people out there who don't appreciate this art is just mind boggling to me. Mind. The people who don't get Shakespeare, I'm like, the point isn't to tell the story. It's to make the story as beautiful as possible yeah you know yeah it's like i was saying last night ham or shakespeare never just gets to the point because that's not the point of what he wrote right anybody could tell it these stories you, makes you work mm -hmm. to get there yeah i don't want to leave no one either i want to go see hamlet every other show that it's performing mm -hmm. through october and then i want to go see the other shows that we don't get to see yep but I think I think our selection was good. We did have a good selection. If let's see, what did we end up not seeing? Um, Twelfth Night. Twelfth Night. Henry the the conclusion of Henry. Henry which the is like, it's Henry the Sixth, and it's yeah. parts two and three. Yeah, and it's four hours long. So I was like, I'm good missing no that. No shade, but like, uh. -uh. So there was that. There's Twelfth mm -hmm. Night, and I think those are the other two Shakespeare's, and then um. Every Brilliant Thing, which is Michael Doherty's one-man play, which I would die to see. Mm -hmm. And The Book of Will. What's The Book of Will about? Um, it's about the publication of Shakespeare's work, works. Mm. Something like that. Something along those lines. Interesting. I think that's all of them. Because so yeah, I think, I think we had good choices here. Yeah. 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 I I really don't have any desire to see any of the historic like the historical ones, like Henry and Richard the Third and Henry the Fifth and Henry the Sixth. They do do a good job. Um Oh I I've believe it. I've seen all of them up to this year. And they're hard they're hard to get through for sure, but I mean these people are brilliant and they bring it to life. Mm hmm Anyway, somehow. It's amazing. The fact that Shakespeare wrote a four-hour play that was only part of the <laughs> whole thing. It wasn't even the whole thing. He's that insane. Man was on some next level. <laughs> I can't wait to meet him in heaven. <laughs> Be like, dude. Listen, I have a few questions what for you. What were you on? <laughs> How did this come to be and why? Oh, so yeah, we're so sad. Oh, yeah. I don't want to go, but... I guess we have to go be adults and real people again. Whatever that means. In case you wanted an update on our kind of scary hotel room, the toilet is haunted. Uh-huh. It's actually haunted. And the shower's broken. I went to get in the shower this morning, and the handle came off in my hand. Like, like that's how she woke me up this morning. Great. She's like, you were already awake. I was not really awake. Like, yes, you were. You were sitting up. Was I? 
Yeah, you were sitting up in bed. And you were like, good morning. And I said, good morning, the shower had broken. <laughs> I must have, like, just woken up. But, anyway. yeah. And then, yeah, the toilet, like, flushes at its own discretion. You know how, like, like after you flush the toilet and there's just the water mechanics just, mm -hmm. whoosh, it's, it's been like, doing that all day long. Mm-hmm. And, like, it won't flush when you tell it to flush. It flushes when it decides to. Yeah. So we'll just be sitting here and it'll start like running. <laughs> and then it'll just like mellow out. Right. <laughs> but we haven't been murdered yet. No. So tonight so. might be the night. <laughs> Hopefully keep you updated. So tomorrow. whoever finds these videos on Madison's phone. Um, please release them in theaters like Blair Witch style. <laughs> um Here we go. Yeah, okay. All Tell right. him we loved him. Tell him we love. That's our dying wish. That's our dying wish. Just in case we don't make it through the through the night. Tell him that we love him, and this was a good way to spend our last evening alive. Yeah. Amen. 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 Okay. <laughs>